Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplus, they, she, he, and this is literally graphic. And today I'm doing another Black Comics TBR video where I talk about 10 books by Black comic book creators that I will read and review over the next little while. Since I started setting monthly TBRs, I've been aiming to read at least one title off this list per month and keeping myself reading diversely all year round. This is the fourth installment since I started this project back in summer 2020. Link in the cards to my original video and a link to the playlist of all my reviews of black rated comics. There's something for just about everyone there. And as is my habit in these videos, let us take a moment to highlight a black YouTuber you all should be following right now. Today I wanted to highlight Intentionally Bookish a booktuber I have been following for some time now. I just watched her set up her first reading journal and it was so nice. She also talks a lot about cozy mysteries, which I don't read myself, but reminds me a lot of people in my life who I really love who do. So I still really enjoy her videos. One final aside before we get to the TBR, I did want to briefly highlight Wake, the hidden history of woman-led Slave Revolt by Rebecca Hall because I was just so excited to read it. I picked it up right away and I didn't wait to put it in a TBR. Link in the cards to my review. This book is a graphic memoir that follows Hall's passion for researching and writing about women-led slave revolts, both the successes and the gatekeeping she runs into along the way. I ended up reading this book five out of five stars. Transitioning to the TBR itself. Let's start things with a couple of books that are already on my schedule. First, we have Far Sector by N.K. Jemison and Jamal Campbell. After a short struggle, I have managed to purchase a physical copy of this title. I don't buy too many books, but it's not currently available through my library at all, which is certainly a crime. But it's also from a writer I already really love, seems pretty well reviewed, and it's part of the realm of comics reading club. Not to mention it looks beautiful. To offer a brief synopsis, quote, for the past six months, newly chosen Green Lantern sojourner Joe Moulin has been protecting the city enduring, a massive metropolis of 20 billion people. The city has maintained peace for over 500 years by stripping its citizens of their ability to feel. As a result, violent crime is virtually unheard of and murder is non-existent, end quote. Review coming before the end of the month. Next, a book I just scheduled for next month is Akisi by Marguerite Abut and Matthew Sapin. Longtime viewers will remember I've been working on reading through Marguerite's series Aya and really enjoyed them. Would highly recommend. Now I'm on to the companion series about Akisi. Quote, the plucky, troublemaking Akisi is back with her mischief on the Ivory Coast. This time she has to keep herself from drowning, stand up to a bully, make peace with her arch nemesis, the prettiest girl in school, and evade a witch doctor's potion, end quote. Really looking forward to picking up this volume. Moving right along, I'm a bit late to the party, but I want to pick up Philadelphia by Rodney Barnes, Jason Shaw Alexander, and Louis Nicht in the near future. It feels like forever since I read anything with vampires in it. And it seems like a lot of tropey fun. Quote, when a small town beat cop comes home to bury his murdered father, the revered Philadelphia detective James Sangster Sr., he begins to unravel a mystery that leads him down a path of horrors and shakes his beliefs to their core. Vampires! End quote. Next up, I will be tackling Bayou, Volume 1 and 2 by Jeremy Luck. Quote, Lee Wagstaff is the daughter of a black sharecropper in the Depression-era town of Charon, Mississippi. When Lily Westmoreland, her white playmate, is snatched by agents of an evil creature known as Bog, Lee's father is accused of kidnapping. Lee's only hope is to follow Lily's trail into this fantastic and frightening alternate world. Along the way, she enlists the help of a benevolent blues-singing swamp monster called Bayou. Together, Lee and Bayou trek across a hauntingly familiar southern Neverland, confronting creatures both benign and malevolent in an effort to rescue Lily and save Lee's father from being lynched. End quote. Feeling like I'm leaning into the horror this time around. Apparently, Bayou was originally published by DC Comics Short
short-lived webcomic imprint, Zuda Comics. Moving back in a superhero direction, I am setting an intention to read Static Shock, Rebirth of the Cool by Dwayne McDuffie and John Paul Leon. I could have sworn I had read something else by Dwayne McDuffie before, but apparently not. Quote, threatened by high school bullies, ignored by girls, Virtual Hawkins' life changed dramatically when a mutagenic gas accidentally gave him superhuman abilities. Virgil was reborn as Static, the electrically powered teen superhero. And while Static tries to balance the pressures of his schoolwork, after-school job, and family life, he also protects his inner-city neighborhood against villains including Holocaust and Commando X. End quote. And of course, the superhero series that I've been working on for the last few TBRs. I obviously want to pick up Black Panther by Christopher Priest, The Complete Collection, Volume 4, and wrap up this creative's run. According to Goodreads, the synopsis for this collection is... Pause for spoiler warnings, I suppose. These were originally published back in the 90s, I think. Quote, With T'Challa gone, who will inherit the mantle? Could it be the guy with the trench coat and guns? Kevin Casper Cole is seeking revenge on the people who hurt his family, and it will bring him into conflict with corrupt New York policemen as well as a brutal hunter. It's the all-new Black Panther vs. the White Wolf, as a crime novel and superhero comic form begins, but nothing in Priest's tale is ever black and white. End quote. Next up is Reginald Hoodlin. Moving along to nonfiction, I want to highlight Amazon's Abolitionists and Activists, a graphic history of women's fight for their rights by Mickey Kendall and A. D'Amico next. Quote, the ongoing struggle for women's rights has spanned human history, touched nearly every culture on earth, and encompassed a wide range of issues, such as the right to vote, work, get an education, own property, exercise, bodily autonomy, and beyond. Amazon's Abolitionists and Activists is a fun and fascinating graphic novel style primer that covers the key figures and events that have advanced women's rights from antiquity to the modern era. In addition, this compelling book illuminates the stories of notable women throughout history, from queens and freedom fighters to warriors and spies, and the progressive movements led by women that have shaped history, including abolition, suffrage, labor, civil rights, LGBTQ liberation, reproductive rights, and more. Examining where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Amazon's Abolitionists and Activists is an indispensable resource for people of all genders interested in the fight for a more liberated future, end quote. My interest in this book is also built off of having read her prose, not comic work, Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Making Candle, exactly one year ago, and rating it 5 out of 5 stars. If you haven't already picked it up, I would highly recommend. Then we have a historical fiction comic, MPLS Sound by Hannibal Taboo, Joseph Philip Illage, and Meredith Laxton. Quote, when Prince burst onto the pop scene in 1978, he put Minneapolis on the music map. Many up-and-coming, many up-and-coming bands followed the trail that he blazed. MPLS Sound is the story of one such group, Star Child, led by a young woman inspired by Prince to start her own revolution. Through her journey, we see from within exactly how his royal badness transformed the entire Minneapolis scene. End quote. This title is the most recent addition to my TBR pile, but it looks too interesting not to pick up ASAP. Wrapping this TBR up, we have last, but certainly not least, Infinitum, an Afrofuturist tale by Tim Fielder. Quote, Afrofuturism, a cultural movement that began in the early 20th century is an escape from racial hostilities, economic turmoil, and aggressive policing in black communities. It is enjoying a renaissance witnessed by the record-breaking success of creative projects including the acclaimed award-winning film Black Panther, Janelle Monae's hit album Dirty Computer, Jordan Peele's vocative feature Get Out, Octavia Butler's famed science fiction novel Kindred, and Slang Knoll's sundial headdress. Now comes Tim Fielder's compelling, beautifully rendered graphic novel, Infinitum. In Infinitum, King Aja Oba and Queen Liwa are revered across the African continent for their impressive political and military skills, yet the future of their kingdom is in jeopardy, for the royal couple do not have an heir of their own. When the king kidnaps his son, born to a concubine, Obinrin, she curses Aja with the gift of immortality. After enjoying long, wonderful lives, both Queen Liwa and the Crown Prince die naturally, leaving the ageless, bereaved King Aja heartbroken and alone. Taking advantage of Aja's vulnerability, enemy nations rise to power and kill the king, or so they think. 
King Asia Oba survives the fatal attack, finally realizing the bitter fruit of Obinrin's curse. For decades, the immortal Aja wanders the world, mourning his lost subjects and searching for a new kingdom. His journey leads him across time, allowing him to witness the transatlantic slave trade, the New World, and the American Civil Rights Movement. The expansion of global technology brings about intergalactic travel, first contact with an alien species, and conflicts within and ultimately outside the known universe. Thrust into these seminal events, Asia, now known by many as John, faces harrowing decisions that will determine mankind's physical and spiritual trajectory. In 260 stunningly, emotionally evocative full-color images, Infinitum presents a unique cosmic experience, addressing pressing issues of racism, classism, gender inequality, the encroachment of technology, and the spiritual cost of war, while exposing the history behind ancient mysteries, including Olmec heads and maroon societies. End quote. Final, final side note. As I did in my last video, I just wanted to highlight some more black comic creators that have recently joined my overall TBR spreadsheet since my last video. We have Philippe Smith, Eve L. Ewing, Jeffrey Thorne, L.L. McKinney, Kevin Graveau, Brian Edward Hill, John Ridley, and Sean Martinborough. Definitely looking forward to cataloging their bibliographies, as it were. As always, suggestions are always welcome. Who is your favorite black comic creator? Bye y'all, keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Nanishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.